I started having severe um, debilitating headaches. I was probably in the emergency room every other day, um, you know, just screaming in pain. I had ambulance coming to my house constantly, picking me up, taking me in. She'd been to numerous doctors, had conflicting diagnoses, was given different suggestions, uh, and more importantly, no one was uh, able to tell her what the underlying cause could be. Nobody knew what was going on. Um, they wanted to just give me pain medicine and send me home. Pseudotumor cerebri is a condition in which there is elevation of pressure inside the brain. It does manifest with headaches primarily and vision problems, double vision, blurred vision, and impairment in peripheral vision. And if this is not treated in a timely manner, uh, you can have permanent visual loss. So it's something that does need to be addressed immediately when discovered. I had neurosurgeons coming in saying, um, you know, we have your diagnosis, you have pseudotumor, but it's time to have a shunt put in. A shunt basically is the insertion of a small tubing into the brain or in the spinal cord that drains a little bit of excess fluid to lower the pressure. At that point I said, you know, I, I don't want to shunt. I, you know, I'll do anything to not, to not do that. And I had met a neurosurgeon there that had told me about Johns Hopkins and a, a research study being done. I got a call from Johns Hopkins Access Line that they wanted to transfer a patient from Austin, Texas, and that she was being airlifted to Hopkins and could I see her right away. She had read a lot about shunts and the problems shunts can have over the long term. So. She really did not see that in her future and wanted alternative options. What we found is that the dilatation of the nerve, enlargement of the vein using a metal stent can resolve the problem permanently and therefore avoid the need of surgery. What is important to understand here is that whenever you try to apply a new technique or a new device uh, to a, a disease that we don't know uh, completely yet, it is very important to have a multidisciplinary approach. And it's only when we have a consensus that the whole group agrees this is the best option for our patient that we will come to our patient and propose the procedure. We as a group felt that the stent was the right thing for her. She did fit the criteria we use uh, before we proposed the stent procedure. First, she had bilateral uh, stenosis of her transverse sinuses. She had failed the conventional medical uh, therapy and she was actively losing vision. Ashley and her family felt that it did make intuitive sense for her that a stent may be the first step. In her cases, the likelihood of needing surgery is very, very small. Probably she will never need surgery. However, what we need to do is monitor closely over the next several months and make sure that there is nothing that happens to the stent, like an occlusion of the stent, that would then lead again to the increase in intracranial pressure. Thankfully, she has not had any recurrence of the pseudotumor cerebri. And I think since we've treated the underlying cause of the problem, her pseudotumor cerebri is not going to come back. It was definitely a miracle. If I didn't have Johns Hopkins, if I didn't have Dr. Mogakar, I don't know really where I'd be right now.